Hymn 35, Love Divine. Shall you stand, please? started it a couple of weeks ago, and, and just looking at the reality of, of what's to come. What are we looking at? And so we started last week, and I just did a handout that, that I had uh, drawn up, and, and it was this one. Now, where are we? Well, we're in the church age. Where are we headed? We're headed to the rapture. Amen. What happens when we're gone, when the Spirit takes us out of here? Tribulation begins. But, you know, that seven years of tribulation broke up, three and a half, three and a half. And again, we're going to cover all of this in uh, great detail when we get into the book of Revelation. But the reality is, what, this is what's going on on earth. Tribulation, horror, all of the awful you know, judgment that is being poured upon this earth. But then, where are we? Man, we're in heaven. We're the bride yeah. of Christ. Uh, we're being robed in white and united eternally with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Him, and we move through that wonderful judgment seat of Christ, our purification into the marriage supper of the Lamb, then the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you what, that is going to be something. He came the first time in the clouds to receive us unto himself. He comes the second time to rule and reign. Amen. And so he puts down all sin. We move into the millennial kingdom. One thousand year reign of Jesus Christ on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And then at the end of that time, because remember at the end of the tribulation, Satan is put in chains and he is not loose for 1,000 years. And when he is loose, all the unsaved of the millennium. Now listen, there are people born throughout the millennium. We've talked about this several times before. And again, as they are born through that period of time, there are probably going to be millions of unsaved. Because even with Jesus Christ ruling and reigning on the throne of David, every judgment, every rule in absolute truth and purity... People will reject him. Reason they, they will say, well, why would they do that? This is Jesus Christ right in front of them. Ruling and reigning. Why did the Jews crucify him? <laughs> he was right in front of them. Doing miracles, fulfilling every single prophecy of the Old Testament of which they said they believed. And yet, they condemn him and they crucify him. Say, well, why will these reject him at the end of the tribulation and at the end of the millennium because they will not place themselves under authority. This is an authority issue. Who's the authority? Jesus was the authority ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. And they will rebel against authority just like men have always rebelled against authority. This is not going to change. Jesus Christ is going to put it all down. Great white throne judgment. All those things as that comes about, and then, glory to God, the eternal state. We move again from this old earth to a new heaven and a new earth, and a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. I'll tell you what, uh, we have great things to look forward to. Amen. What is ahead? What, what are we looking, what are we moving towards? Now, I handed out, and again, I used this last week, I, I wanted to have this as an overview. This is where we're at. This is where we're headed. Uh, ultimately, we will be in the book of the Revelation more than anywhere else, but we will also come back. We will, you know, we will bounce off of Daniel and Ezekiel and, and um, you know, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4 and 1 Corinthians 15, and, and we'll go a number of different places. But the book of the Revelation is going to be where we spend most of our time as we look at things to come. And the revelation, again, is a revelation at a glance. And, and this comes from exactly where it says it comes from. There at the bottom of the page, Nelson's complete book of Bible maps and charts. And uh, I say, Pastor, you're not supposed to copy this stuff. No, you buy this book and you can copy up to a thousand copies of anything in it. And, 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 and it is not a, a copyright violation. So I love this book. And uh, I can't get in trouble. Uh, but again, as we look here, and I just want to walk through this, uh, go ahead uh, and open uh, the Word of God, open the Revelation chapter 1. Because I want to set the stage, I want to get everything in place, like we did last week, walking from where are we, where are we headed, and then picking up here in the book of the Revelation, we'll be looking at some of that same thing, but so you can use this chart, Revelation at it uh, begins here in chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so where does this come from? Where do we get this book? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the unveiling. Revelation means unveiling. And so, they're, listen, they're taking the covering off that we might know the future. Right. You know, how many people over the years, like Nostradamus and all kinds of different people, wrote books and all kinds of different things? Uh, what was that, Gail Dixon? Anyway, she, you know, she was a, you know, she never called herself a prophetess, but she made all kinds of predictions for years and years and years. But you know what? The thing that always interested me is, oh man, Nostradamus, you, you read that stuff? Well, that guy was right 73% of the time. <laughs> well, 27% of the time he was dead. Uh, listen, a prophet of God, how many times is he wrong? Once, Once and he's dead. And, and so again, and, and, and Dixon, whatever, her, I don't remember her first name, Jean, Jean, Jean Dixon. Dixon. Right. You know, again, they would say, oh, this year, 
she was there how many percent of the time? Well, if she was a prophet of God, she'd be dead. You know, what, 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 what is the reality here? And who's giving us this information? Tells me here what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's unveiled. He's going to show us the future. And so he begins here. Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Where did Jesus get this? God from God the Father to God the Son. Right. Perfect. And so again, God gave to him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. I always love it and again this week as I was going over some things. Uh, there's these uh, theologians. They, they get into arguments. Who, who wrote the Revelation? Well, I don't think it was John. Well, like it says six or seven times it was written by John when you go through Revelation. But yet they want to you know, argue about who wrote it. Well, I tell you what, it was written by John, uh, who was Jesus Christ's servant. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So what does he bear? He bears record of the word of God. This came to me through Christ from God. I bear record. This is of God. And so as he, he puts that forward, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, what, what testimony is this? And again, as we get into this, you'll see much of this. And if you have a red letter edition Bible, is it red? Listen, this, this, this is Jesus Christ talking. Okay, this is, this is coming from our Lord and Savior. And so again, Christ and of all things that he saw. Okay, John is called, we're going to see how in just a minute, but John is called, he's called to observe, he's called to listen. In some cases he's called to write, in other cases he's called not to. But again, John to the seven churches. And so when, or excuse me, blessed is he, back to verse 3, blessed is he that readeth and they that heareth the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Listen, this can happen at any moment. The time is at hand. And, and so these things can begin. And we will see what next thing, the next great thing on the prophetic calendar? Right. Rapture of the church. Amen. And so listen, it's at hand. This can happen at any moment. And by the way, it could have happened at any moment for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. Right. But only God knows the time. Only God knows the day. And, and so, again, we leave that, once again, into the hand of God. But here, then, he begins to go in to the seven churches. And John, to the seven churches, whom is this being written to? He has pointed out seven specific churches. And he begins to write to them. And if you've ever done that, that study uh, before, and I'm sure most of you have, um, the, the reality of the seven churches, as he begins to write Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. <clears throat> if you ever look at a map, he writes the first one's here, second one's here, third one's here, fourth one's here, and he just goes around in this sort of almost a horseshoe of where these churches are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he writes to the seven churches. These are known churches in known geographical areas. This isn't something somebody just pulled out of a hat. This is absolute clarity. He writes to them, and he writes about them. And we will get to that, and we will walk through the seven churches, again, before we're done uh, with this study. But again, we're at seven churches which are in Asia. Okay, where are they? Asia. Asia. Grace be to you and peace from him, which is, which was, and which is to come. Wow. He was from everlasting and to everlasting. Amazing. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He wants to make this so very clearly. Undeniable. This is from Jesus Christ. This is about the future. This comes from God the Father. And, and this has all of the backing of the Spirit. And so he has full, again, uh, knowledge, wisdom that he's about to share. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the Almighty. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all he has done, all he has accomplished, and all he is going to accomplish. Thank you that he has shown us the future. God, we are not flying blind as believers. The only time that we're flying blind is when we don't spend enough time in the book. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, God, help us to see, to understand. Uh, may we receive your wisdom, for we have none, but the wisdom in which we receive from you. God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. May we truly be walking with that daily, relationship in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, God, if there is one here who does not know Christ as their Savior, might this be the day of salvation for them? God, we'll thank you for it. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Beginning, looking, how are we going to approach this study? And again, Revelation at a glance is really a great way to do it. And this just simply walks through, and of the Revelation, excuse me, is laid out chronologically. Now, a lot of people are very, very confused because they don't simply look at this in a chronological manner. And they come in and they start to what, mix things up, different areas up. Uh, people don't want to take the book of the Revelation literally. Oh, that's really not what that means. And, and they start saying, well, this is this, and that's that, and this could be something else. And I remember uh, Jack Van Empe years ago, Boy, when I first started listening to Jack Van Empey, you better remember him. Uh, <clears throat> man, I was impressed. I'll tell you what, I mean, his ability of memorization of the scripture is amazing. Unbelievable. But again, he was teaching on prophecy. And he's I mean, so smart and so clear. And boy, he just, but you know what? And, and I watched this for guys who have had ministries that were strictly based on prophecy. And of course, not all of them, that, that, that's always a wrong term. But so many of them over the years, they would teach everything the Bible had to say about prophecy. Well, the Bible always says so much about prophecy. Okay? There is parts of the Word of God, can, and including prophecy, that we're to take according to faith. I don't have to see it. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to clearly know it, but if the Bible says it, that settles it. I simply have to receive it. I have to believe it. They get to that place. Well, when's, when's the rapture going to take place? Come on, the Bible tells us nobody knows. How many of the prophetic guys over the years started date setting? One after another. Uh, even Van Empey, as he got up in age, he started making predictions that you're going, Jack, come on. The Bible doesn't go that far. Man, you are so good. You was so good. Just go back and stick with the Bible. Stop where it stops. The rest we take by faith. But people aren't satisfied. They want to know. And people, other people, uh, feel they have to give it to them. Listen, you can't give somebody something you haven't got. And so we have to be very, very careful when we come to the Word of God. And so when we enter into the study here of Revelation, and you look there, what, what's the, the focus? First, chapter 1. If you look, this is set up, it says reference. It gives you chapter 1 and chapter 2. And if you look up or down, uh, that's what falls into that first chapter. Uh, the second chapter. You'll see what falls into that as you go up and down uh, in the columns. Things which will take place. You see that from chapters 4 all the way through chapter the end of the, of the uh, book. And see what falls into those places. Uh, I, I think this is pretty clear the way it's set up. But things which you have seen. That's the first things that John communicates. This has already happened. I have already been called to write this. These are the things that I have been to. He said, what has already happened? And then they move in here, uh, things which are 
And if you go go back up to things which uh, you have seen, number one, what did he see? Jesus Christ. Um, what was the topic? The theophany. Uh, theophany is also, especially when it has to do with Jesus Christ, is also called a what? Anybody remember? Christophany. And so it can be a theophany or a Christophany. I usually refer to it as a Christophany because it's a seeing of Jesus Christ. Uh, so again, the Lord Jesus Christ, what's the topic? Jesus Christ, Christophany. It is a vision of Christ. What does Christ do? What does he give us? He talks with us. He communicates with us. Uh, oh, what about the location? John is on the island of Patmos. And again, what? For God. He wouldn't shut up about God. <laughs> and they had to do something. And so they finally banished him to this island, uh, which is an island of prisoners and different things. And so there he is again on the Isle of Patmos about 95 or 96 AD. And so this is that things which you have seen. What about things which are? The things that we're dealing with at that time with John. And so, well, what? The seven churches. What does he get about the seven churches? Jesus, again, the vision of Christ, the, the communication to the seven churches, where they are, what they're doing for Jesus Christ and or not doing. They, they receive condemnation or praise. You know, one, one of the two. How are they doing for Jesus Christ? And so you have the seven churches. You have, again, the vision, you have the talk <clears throat> concerning them. Then we move to chapter 4. Chapter 4 is where the tribulation really just starts to pick up. Because what we see in chapter 4, John is... Matter of fact, let's turn here. Turn to chapter 4. John here, again, speaking. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven... The first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up hither, I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a, a jasper and a sardis stone. And, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeding lightning and thunders and voices, and there were given lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. The third beast, the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. <clears throat> and the four beasts had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying... Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sit on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him, set on the throne, before him was set on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Wow, when we walk into chapter 4, as John begins to unveil this wonder that we see here in chapter 4. Can, can you simply imagine a wonder? I'm going to tell you what. In my opinion, this is a picture of the rapture. Come up here, there, boom. Suddenly, what? He's in the spirit. Bang. And he's there. And what does he see? Man, he sees the throne of God. He sees the wonder and the glory. I mean, this is so... I, I, rem I remember a day <clears throat> when the word awesome was only used for this. 
Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now ice cream is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember a day when somebody would say, man, it's, it's all the will of God. I mean, the vision is just so awesome. It's so, it's so amazing before man. I mean, can you just imagine, can you place yourself in the eyes of John, who is seeing this unfold before him? It's my opinion we will one day. Amen. We will one day. We're going to be removed from this earth. We're going to be taken straight to heaven. And the glory and the wonder of our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to be before us. Right. And we are going to be purified at the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to be moved into the marriage supper of the Lamb when we become His bride. Can you imagine the wonder and the glory, the, the pomp and circumstance that is going to surround that is going to be equal with this. I mean, we are going to experience such a, a marvelous relationship Amen. with my Father God, His Son, Jesus Christ, empowered and filled eternally by the Holy Spirit of God. What a wonder. What a glory, again, that we are going to experience. But that is what, you know, again, as we walk through, as we see the things that are happening, but we get to chapter 4. And we begin to see the judge, Jesus Christ. We begin to see the tribulation pouring out. We ultimately, by the time we get to chapter 19, we see the second coming of Jesus Christ. Wow. Chapter 20. And ultimately the end. What is going on during all of this time? The end of the millennial kingdom. The end of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. The wonder then of all that is going on in heaven. I'll tell you what, when he returns in his second coming, you remember who he brings with him? Us. Us. Isn't it great? Dressed in white, following Jesus on a white horse as he comes streaking through the sky with all the believers behind him to put down all sin forever. Amen. And then the judgment. And, I mean, the great white throne judgment this, this, is, this is, again, this is nothing to cheer about. These were all souls for whom Christ died. But they are all souls who rejected Jesus Christ and now must stand before the judgment seat because of their own choice. My friend, it's their choice. They are there because of their decisions. And as they stand before that throne, and as we talked about, I think I talked, referred to it last week, says they're cast into the lake of fire. Isn't a lob, isn't a toss, they're cast into the lake of fire. I remember trying to describe that many years ago when I was probably the first time I preached through this. I described it as a guy throwing a 100 mile an hour fastball. They're cast in hell. And just, just, they're gone. It's done. It's over. But they are there for eternity. But again, sad. This a sad thing. All the glory, all the wonder, all the observances, you know, that, that we see, and the joy that it brings to, to us just reading such things. But then we get to the reality of that eternal punishment in hell for all who have rejected Jesus Christ. But then we move, and we'll move, as we walk through the revelation here, and as this says, at a glance, we walk through that tribulation times, we look things. We see the judgments. We see the sealed judgments. The bowl judgments. We see the trumpets. We see all those things as they unfold and they take place. And my friend, as long as you keep it in, a, in chronology, Revelation makes sense. Right. It's when you get mixed up. When you start to say or you start to listen to people who, who say, well, there's, no, that's not literal. Or you start listening to some of the, the guys who have been teaching prophecy for a long, long time who suddenly have felt they had to answer more than the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. And they start telling you, oh, that's, those are nuclear weapons. When all those explosions are taking place, all that heat and the blisters that people are in, and you know, everything that is described, that's from a nuclear bomb. Oh, they're, they're flying in the sky with the face of a man and all those are helicopters. God doesn't need a nuclear bomb. God doesn't need a helicopter. Amen. God will do exactly what he said, exactly the way he said it. 
And he needs nothing that was created by the hands of men. Okay? Nor do I believe, my personal opinion, he will not use anything created by the hands of men. God will do what God said. And he'll do it his way as he always does. Amen. It's always, always been interesting to me. You know when they think they have Jesus figured out in the New Testament? <laughs> and <clears throat> they'll come to him and they'll okay, look, we got, we, got, we got him now. Listen, we're going to give him two choices because there's only two choices. Give him two choices. Okay, Jesus, is it this way or that way? Jesus does what? Gives him a third way. Third, third way, which is the right way. Amen. Okay. Uh, and, and so, again, we, we look at Revelation. We look at the things that are going on. And we can only think on our level. We can only think about the things we know. And so we look at this. We say, oh, well, I know that must be. And those must be. No, they don't. This is all about God. This is God judgment. God's judgment. And I do not believe, as I said personally, my personal opinion, that God's going to use anything created by the hands of man. He would take care of all those things himself. But again, as we walk through the revelation, you can simply use this overview, this revelation at a glance, uh, and look at that and say, okay, we put this in, in chronological order. We can see, okay, that's chapter 1, chapter 2, over to chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 19, chapter 19 to the end of the book, we can see where all these things fit. And it just simply helps us to keep things in order and not start flipping things over or start putting things just like just like the New Testament. When we're studying through the New Testament, if you can't, if you can't keep clear who's the church and who's Israel, man, you can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. You have to keep the two separated. Amen. And it's the same thing here. Understanding Revelation is written chronologically. Accept it that way. Walk through. And, and you will see that the book of the Revelation really isn't that difficult to understand. I'm not saying that there isn't anything difficult. There is. Okay? We'll get to it. We'll talk about it. We'll walk through it. And, and as I've always done, if I don't understand it, I'll tell you. I, you know what? I don't know. Uh, but but God does, and, and, and my faith's in him. But, again, walking through, looking, starting, and that next great thing on prophetic calendar is the rapture. Right. And we'll just start, uh, just quickly, we've only got a couple minutes left here. But every study of, of the Word of God, everything has a beginning and an end. And so as we look at the doctrine of last things, of course, uh, doctrine that's called eschatology. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, doctrine of last things is just clear as a bell. I don't know why we need a big word for that. But anyway, mm -hmm. study of eschatology. Mm -hmm. and, but start with the rapture. The rapture of the church. We're walking here. We're alive here. And, you know, I'll tell you what. You've all heard it. Uh, I remember where I first heard it. But I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. The upper taker. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm getting older. I'm getting closer to being dead, I'm sure, every day. But the reality is, there's still time. The rapture could happen before we're out of church today. Amen. And, I, and, and I'm just, I'm still, I'm looking for the upper taker. Uh, and, and when that happens, you're going to be walking, sitting, sleeping, wherever it may be. Because all around the world, listen, there's only people who are up and there's people who are sleeping. You have all kinds of things, all different times of the day. It's all going to happen. Right. In one instant, in one moment, and we're simply going to be gone off the face of the earth. Amen. I tell you what, that is going to be a day. Okay. And, and this earth is going to be thrown into such utter chaos and confusion. What, suddenly, millions upon millions of people are gone. But you know, we're already set up for an answer. Those who were with me several years ago when we went through Revelation, you know, I, I again, um, what have we heard for years now? All, all movies and all kinds of stuff for years and years and years. People coming from outer space. Mm. Yeah, you know, we've made contact. I just saw a thing again the other day. I was on my laptop and, and you know, you go into news and different things. And then there are those other little sidebars. Okay, you know, and then, you know, there, there's, there, there's communication. They, they, they've made communication. There, there are those, there's aliens communicating. I don't click on those. But, but again, but, oh, man, not again. You know. But 
listen, there's people who are so into that, and they believe they're aliens, they believe, you know, that, that there has been contact, they believe that the United States government has alien bodies in Area 51, they, they think all this stuff is going on, and they believe it. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when millions of people disappear, they're going to go see to them, so. Uh, the, the, the wacko guy who said, oh, yeah, man, listen, I was a walk in the field that one night, this spaceship just come down and they kidnapped me and took me away. I, I was gone for like days, you know, and, and, and then they brought me back and, and they left me. Yeah, I, I've been with aliens. Uh, those, those whack jobs are going to be the guys who are going to see it. So. I told you, see, they, 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 they just come and took them. And the vast majority of the world is going to believe the lie. Now, if that's the lie, I don't know if that's going to be. To me, right now, at this point in time in history, that makes sense. 20 years from now, that may make no sense at all. But the reality is something like that will be the lie. And most of the people around the world will accept the lie. They'll, they'll believe it. And in believing, the Antichrist will be able to step up and calm everything down. Let's say that's the scenario. And again, I'm not not a prophet, I'm not saying it is. But let's say that's the scenario. The Antichrist can step up and say, listen, we've already been contact, and uh, we're, we're negotiating for a soon return. And uh, listen, I, you guys need to get behind me. This is going to cost a lot of money. And you know, whatever the politician does, he does. And he gets down, he calms the whole thing down. He gets the world behind him. And, and again, this is just a scenario I'm throwing out there. I have no idea what's going to happen. But this is what could happen. This is how the Antichrist could step up. It's how he could calm the world down. It's how he could bring them together and get people to follow him. Because again, if you remember, he, has, he will have great power and authority. He's going to be an amazing guy when he's walking this earth. And so not only can he set up a scenario, he can even say and do things that are going to be absolutely amazing. And so he can step up, he can bring it together, can calm things down, and even to the point of Israel accepts him and signs a covenant with him. Even to that point. Okay, we'll pick up here next week. Let's go ahead and close the word of prayer. Heavenly Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for you. My, as, as we will continue to walk through things to come. And the Heavenly Father God, we will just continue to honor and glorify you, lift you up, Heavenly Father, in every way, and use the truth of your word to witness to others. My truth doesn't save anybody. Your truth can save everybody. So, Heavenly Father God, help us to simply embrace your truth, to communicate your truth. And God, we'll thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name.